A few months ago, this television developed this flickering, flashing line along the top quarter of the display. I figured this can't be a terribly difficult issue to fix, so let's tear it to bits and see if we can't get a functional TV out of this. The first step is obviously getting into the back of the TV, since I can't do much with the back on. We set down a piece of foam to protect the display, which worked phenomenally. Pull out all the screws, remembering to drop a few in the process. <laughs> now the back can come off and we can run some experiments. There are a handful of things that could be damaged here. It could be the power supply, the display, some cable could have come disconnected, or some component could be damaged. The first thing I'll look for is any signs of obvious liquid damage. That would be a bluish, whitish substance or coloration around any pads or components. I'm also looking for any black, burnt, or charred section of PCB or traces. I didn't find any of that though, which is a great sign. Alex insisted that we check the power first, so that's where we started. Words of warning, there's a transformer here that boosts 120 volts AC from your electrical outlet up to 400 volts and puts that in this big bulk capacitor. If you don't know what you're doing, don't open a switching mode power supply. Now that you're aware of that, we pulled out the power supply after discharging the capacitor in a super safe manner and inspected it. Nothing jumped out, but the cable connectors were kindly labeled for us with their voltages, so we grabbed our meters and checked those to ensure all the voltages looked correct. We were slightly confused by a low voltage at first, but realized it was a sleep voltage. All voltage lines showed what they were supposed to once the TV was powered on. So let's move on to the next easiest thing. I'll reseat these two wide white ribbon cables. They carry data to the display. If one were to come loose, or a pin were to lose connection, it could potentially show up as an issue like this. Being an LCD display, there's a powerful whitish-bluish backlight behind a laminated liquid crystal display. By sending control signals up through the liquid crystal, you can mask in or out colors of the white light to achieve red, green, and blue pixels. So now that we've reseated our connectors, we'll flip the TV up and see that we've fixed the... No? Damn. Alright, well what's next? Research. We found a guy online who fixed a similar issue by using clear tape to mask out pins of the white ribbon cables. This never worked. There is no good footage of this, but I spent hours hunched over with an X-Acto knife cutting tiny little strips of tape and masking out individual pins. I probably power cycled the TV a good 400 times. I did eventually eradicate the flickering, but it resulted in these really apparent vertical bars spanning the entire display. But finally we found it, our golden ticket. A user on a tech forum discussing an issue that sounded almost identical to ours. We measured the voltages on our TCON board, that's this one right here, and they were identical. The clocking of the TCON board was also the exact same rate as the pixels that were flickering on and off. This user stated that by replacing their TCON board, they saw a dramatic shift in voltage levels, and they thought their issue would have been resolved had they not soldered to a bunch of pins and shorted some as well. So we went on eBay and ordered a brand new TCON board for 20 bucks. Two weeks later. We have the TCON board. We'll install this, everything will be fixed, this is our last hope, and damn it! Alright, fine, new plan. Who needs an LCD anyway? We're pulling it off, and hot damn, that thing's bright! I feel like I'm staring into the sun. It's like three to four times brighter than when the LCD panel was on it. This is because the liquid crystal that created the original color display is imperfect. It absorbs a shocking amount of light, meaning that only a fraction of what's being produced back here reaches your eyes. By removing the LCD panel, all that light goes straight through. You can try that now by setting your TV to display a blank white image. Compare that to this photo. Note that while bright, your TV isn't going to illuminate a dark room as if it was daytime. This is easily as bright as Kyle's $1,000 studio light. So let's hang it above a table and use it to film some more videos. There's only one problem. I want to sell the logic board. Still haven't done that, it's been months. So let's see if we can make the TV work without it. Alex brought a scope over one day and we connected it up to four of the signal wires coming from the power supply. That looked a little like this. Now, that's a rather complex signal, and I can't easily make that, but the end voltage is conveniently 3.3 volts, and I've got a couple of voltage regulators that hit that voltage, so let's grab the 13 volts off the TV and regulate that down to 3 volts. We'll feed that back into the power supply logic, which will end up looking something like this. But hey, as long as it works, which it does, this is probably not the best for the TV's electronics, but it was dead before this anyway, so whatever. 
All that's left is to hang the thing, and we're good to go. While you watch us hang this television in a rather strange orientation, I should let you know that I've been using it like this for a couple of months now. It's honestly great. It provides a ton of soft light and is going to be perfect for filming more videos on the bench. It's also the light that I use to assemble our DS4 Type-C mod boards, which are out now at shop.casualcoders.dev. You can check out the original video which was featured by Hackaday by clicking the end card on the right hand side. Don't forget to subscribe for more nerdy content, and we'll see you next time!